this morning we're continuing to look in Proverbs chapter 10 and Solomon is contrasting uh, the wicked and the righteous and I said yesterday that as you as you continue to read through and, and mine uh, mine m-i-n-e the passage whatever passage it might be in uh, to make observations one of the key things we do in making observations that that lead us to the interpretation of a passage of scripture is that we look for key words or repetitive words. And in Proverbs chapter 10, there are two repetitive words that are in it. Uh, the word righteous or righteousness uh, is used 14 times in these verses. And the word wicked or wickedness is used 13 times. And so that would give us a clue that uh, what Solomon is getting to is the way of the righteous and the way of the wicked. We said yesterday that righteous and wicked are kind of anonyms of one another in Scripture. It's a comparison. And so Solomon's comparing as he observes life, uh, the outcome or the ways of the righteous versus the outcome and the ways of the wicked. And as I was meditating through this uh, passage this morning, there are some clear promises to those who are righteous, and there are some very clear consequences to those who live a wicked life. And we have the idea sometimes that wickedness, we think of the most vile person, like maybe Adolf Hitler or somebody like that. But, but really, it, it just clearly means one who is steered off the path of righteousness. So anything that we might do or another might do or participate in that is off course of what God's righteous standard is, righteousness, right living. Um, it's referring to that way of living as being wicked. And so it can be in, in the minor, most minor way that we uh, could steer off path that would be, that that would be included in a wicked path. And so, but the thought came to my mind with the promises that are given to the righteous. Uh, remember, Solomon is observing that these are the general outcomes of the righteous. But sometimes in life, we may wonder, God, I'm doing everything right as far as I know. I'm, I'm on a path of righteousness. Then why is this calamity coming into my life? God, why has this happened? God, I look around and I see the wicked, people that are wicked, and it seems like they're just prospering all around me that man, they're living this wicked life and, and and they get all the good things and I'm living this righteous life and all this calamity is coming to my mind and into my life. Well, you know, Habakkuk had the same question when God was going to use the wicked nation to judge Israel. God, how, how would you let the wicked judge righteous Israel? Uh, why, why are they prospering and we are not? And God told him, listen, the rain pours on the righteous as well as the unrighteous. In other words, leave it up to me to determine what the ends of the righteous are and what the ends of the wicked are. The, the story's not over yet. And I was thinking of a, of a song that um, sort of a song came to my mind that's really not a hymn, it's not a praise chorus, it's really just an old, old gospel. But if you listen to the words carefully, you can see that this is kind of the cry that the writer is making. That right now it may seem as though the wicked are prospering, but uh, further down the road we'll see God's plan. And it's an old song called Farther Along. Tempted and tried me, off me to wonder why it should be.
I got distracted as I saw the names come up on the feed, and Aaron, I know you are on with us this morning, and I actually thought of you this morning uh, as I was thinking of that. Y'all you know, remember I shared a dear friend, interpreter of mine, and Harold, Harold Danforth down in Nicaragua. Aaron had lost his wife this past weekend, a young mother uh, of two, and um, lost her to COVID, and Aaron, Aaron is definitely a righteous man, and Aaron, you may have question right now. Why, why in your life right now did that happen? Uh, and you see others around you that are wicked and they're prospering. Well, that's what we're looking at this morning in Proverbs chapter ten. Uh, he he begins to write in verse seventeen. He says, "Whoever heeds instruction is on the path of life." But he who rejects reproof lead, uh, leads others astray. The wicked person who rejects truth, not only do they go astray, but they lead others astray in that. They have influence in that. Verse 18, the one who conceals hatred has, high, has lying lips, and whoever utters slander is a fool. When words are many, transgression is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. Uh, you ever notice a person that goes on chatter and chatter and chatter, and oftentimes it's a cover-up for what's wicked in their heart. But he says the one who restrains their lips is prudent, is wise, is managed with their lips. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver, but the heart of the wicked is of little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of sense. The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. Doing wrong is like a joke to a fool, but wisdom is pleasure to a man of understanding. What the wicked dreads will come upon him, but the desire of the righteous will be gained. When the tempest passes, the wicked is no more, or when the storm of life, that word tempest means storm or high winds. When, when the, the storm is over, and we all have storms in life, but when the tempest passes, passes, the wicked is no more, but the righteous is established forever. You hear Solomon saying that in those storms of life, in those difficulties of life, the one who's wicked will be taken away from it because they've not been living by the precepts and the truths and the word of God, but the one who's righteous while we may not come out unscathed, trials in life scathe us, that's no denying that, but, but we'll be established forever. It, it won't take us out. Like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes is the sluggard to those who send him. The fear of the Lord prolongs life, but the years of the wicked will be short. The hope of the righteous brings joy, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. The way of the Lord is a stronghold to the blameless, but destruction to evildoers. The righteous will never be removed, but the wicked will not dwell in the land. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut off. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked will what is perverse. And as I began this morning's devotion, I said that as we compare the results of the consequences in the life of the wicked person and the results and consequences in the life of the righteous one, we may be living a righteous life, and yet we're still faced by those things in life that seem to seemingly take us out, and we look around and the wicked seem to have no trouble. Well, that's not a question that only you or I might ask. There are a number of passages and characters in scripture that ask the same question. Job, in, in his letter in, in, in chapter 21, verses 7 to 13, he says this, why do the wicked still live? Continue on and also become very powerful. 
Their descendants are established with them in their, in their sight, and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear, and the rod of God is not on them. And we know Job, we use that as a, as a marker in Scripture of one who is a righteous man and, and endured all the calamity in his life. And there was a question he had. Why is all this happening to me? I'm a righteous man, and I look around me, and those that are wicked, they're not having any trouble at all. Solomon writes this in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 15. He says, I have seen everything during my lifetime of futility. There is a righteous man who perishes in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man who prolongs his life in his wickedness. David writes this in Psalm 94, verse 3. He says, How long shall the wicked, O Lord, how long shall the wicked exult? Job goes on to ask this question in verse 17 of chapter 21. He says, How often is the lamp of the wicked put out, or does their calamity fall on them? Does God apportion destruction in his anger? In other words, God, it just doesn't seem just or fair. Psalm 73, verses 3 to 9. For I was envious of the arrogant as I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no pains in their death, and their body is fat. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like mankind. One last verse I'll read. Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 1. Righteous you are, O Lord, that I would plead my case with you. Indeed, I would discuss matters of justice with you. Why has the way of the wicked prospered? Why are all those who deal in treachery at ease? So you're not alone in asking that question. But what we fail to recognize and realize is that, that while in this life it may seem as though the wicked prosper and the righteous seem to suffer, and we may look at the promises of Scripture and say, yeah, but those are not true for me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The reason I tell you to hold on is because the end of the story is not finished. You see, we have such a temporal view of life. We, we view life so much in this lifespan of three score and ten. And we fail to recognize that, that God has an eternal perspective that we don't have. That that at the end of this life, that is not the end of life. There is life everlasting and life evermore. And the reason we hold on so much to this life is because we don't yet realize the fullness of the eternal life, the hope that we have because of the resurrection of Christ, that this is not all there is to life. There is life eternal. And God is the one who meets out justice in the very end. And for those who, you and I, who've placed our trust in Christ, who've been made the righteousness of God in Christ, we have that hope of eternity that we don't yet see. Um, Paul refers to that as, as we're looking as though through, through, a, through dim glasses. We don't yet see the glory of God. But we will see it, and that's the hope that we hold on to. And our hope and our prayer is that as we have experienced the goodness and the graces and the mercies of God, that we also might be able to share that with others, even, yes, the wicked, that God would use us to plant a seed in their life today, that God would use us to cultivate a seed that's already been planted in their life, and that maybe by God's grace we would be able to witness him saving somebody today. Make that your prayer. Don't be discouraged and dismayed when, when you suffer calamity and living a right life. You keep on living and trusting by faith in God and his goodness and his grace. God will take care of the wicked. Uh, God will deal with them. But we need to hold on and keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith.